Welcome. We're going to talk today about your empathy and are you projecting it onto others, onto narcissistic people who are not actually um, reflecting any empathy back at you, right? Are you taking your empathy and placing it places that are causing danger to your life and causing your life to um, be around people who are toxic to you because you're sitting and hoping and waiting for them to increase their level of empathy based on your empathy, right? Projecting it outward, assuming others also share in your empathy. So I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you transform your life after being around toxic people, being raised by toxic people, all of that. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. Let's talk about empathy for a second. In psychology, social psychology, it's uh, categorized as an emotion or, or a cognitive ability to sense and feel and experience the other person's emotions. And we know there's different types of empathy, and I'm not going to go into the whole long thing. I have a whole video on that. But basically, it's putting yourself in the position of others. It's the ability to understand another person's thoughts, right, and their feelings in a situation from their point of view not from your own. What they are experiencing, you're able to sense it, to feel it, to notice it, and then take action to help with it, to offer comfort, to offer validation, right? From this place of yourself, okay? And so as an empathic person, what people call empaths, right? Okay, here's the thing. We're not taught to do this, it just is. Okay. It is how we are as human beings when we have this capability, this ability, this superpower, whatever. Okay. And a lot of people see it as a detriment to themselves because toxic people get in and they have so much empathy for these toxic people that they're unable to navigate it. They're unable to say, yeah, but that person isn't basically worthy of my empathy. Right. And I don't mean that in a cruel way. I mean that in a way of self-protection or rather choice. Okay. I don't like to approach the world from self-protection. I prefer to approach the world from choice. So we aren't taught how to choose where to place action of empathy. We can have empathy wherever we have it, right? It's not something you turn on and off. But the action we take and the outpouring of empathy and the expectation of empathy in return is it can be super confusing with narcissists. Here's why. A lot of them are covert. A lot of narcissists, toxic people in particular, will feign empathy. It's sympathy. Basically, they are relating to you through their own experience of a situation or to their own thoughts or how they might feel. It can be very difficult because we have to learn to discern. And as someone with a lot of empathy, of course, you are empathizing with what anyone is experiencing in life, right? If you open yourself up to it and if you're just in their presence. And so, yes, of course, narcissistic people have feelings. They have emotions. I know some people are going to argue with me here, but they do. They, most of them, unless they're truly sociopathic and just void of emotional response, right? Um, or emotional anything, right? It's all about greed, take, want only, right? They have, or at least can display what looks like sadness, frustration, stress, you know, all the, all the things humans go through in a day. What they don't have is a care for anyone else who has that feeling. What they don't have is the empathy outpouring back. They're doing everything subjectively from their own egotistical viewpoint, sympathizing if they even do that. A lot of people at the end of relationships will feel, they'll say things to me like, I have put so much into this. I feel like my empathy has been walked on, like it has been used, like it has been, yes, that's what they're after. They're after, right? Holding on to all your good stuff. They're after the fact that they don't have to say a word and you're outpouring knowing exactly what it is they need because you're feeling it, you're taking it in, right? Even in an argument, all they have to do is trigger you, boom, right? And they can get a reaction because you're empathically going with them on their journey into their own self-destructive behavior. Narcissists in an argument need to have, they need the fuel of the fight. 
they're into it, right? They're trying to heal wounds, to prove right righteousnesses of their own making, to solidify their version of their delusional self and their ego. They're out to keep this construct they've created a reality. And when they're having an argument, everything in that argument is reinforcing this construct, this creation of theirs, of who they think they are, right? And who they're pretending to be. So even then, they're using your empathy because they're throwing things at you that'll make you feel certain things. So here's here's what I want to talk about here. How do you how do you be an empathic person and stay safe? How do you stay healthy? How do you not let other people affect you? And how do you not assume other people have empathy to give back to you? Well, number one, we need to stop assuming and projecting just because we can intuit things. Just because we can sense and feel what's going on in the room doesn't mean we're right with our mind on the interpretation of what we're feeling. There's one for you. <laughs> okay. Many times we're not correct on the, on the cognitive piece, on the part where it hooks up into the brain and the brain goes through all its memories and associations and like looking for a place to anchor right? Our brains are like looking for a way to recall this happening before and make meaning of it. Okay. So what we actually are is highly tuned, intuitive beings. Okay. And this is going to get kind of out there, but we're highly tuned, intuitive beings, right? That have a connection with something else. It doesn't come from ego. It doesn't come from self. It's simply picking up the information and reading it, right? If I assign it to my emotion, it suddenly becomes about myself. If I assign it to my thought, it suddenly becomes about me. And then it's stuck in the same thing that's happening, right? We need to do that. Why do we do need to do that? So that we can take action. Otherwise, we just sit there feeling it all, right? We need to identify with it, with this feeling of empathy. Ooh, a thought. Oh my gosh, I should do that right? I should help. I should this, I should that. But that becomes about us. Now, what happens, the, pro the only problem with that is that's exactly what the narcissistic person is going to pick up on and what they're going to, what anyone who uses you, okay? Not just narcissists, anyone who uses you for your empathy. That's exactly what's being expected of you. The thing is, a lot of us expect it from the world too, <laughs> We want empathy back. Dang it. I want it. Right? Like you want, right? You don't want to just be this, oh, I'm just going to give to everybody. Don't, I don't need a darn thing. I'm just going to like, oh, don't worry about me. You know, no. Right? We have an expectation of reciprocation. Totally okay. None of this is a judgment, you guys. This is all about how to function with this attuned skill and the fact that we are more than that. We're not just this psychological trap that we live in. The reason that matters on our terms and what we talk about here is because that world, that construct of living in that, like bouncing off each other's psychology thing in each other's egos and each other's personalities and all of that, it, it is has been the place in our minds where the trauma has occurred. If we were people who hadn't had all that, this would be a different conversation. But because of that, our associations are always linking to that trauma. Now we see an, a, we see a narcissist or a toxic person or anyone who's not treating us right. We feel I can help them. We feel they just need more love because you know what? 100% right. They just do. But guess what? They don't care. We can't make the other come to the realization, have a care about the amount of work that they would need to put in to crack their ego open, right? And to allow other, other possibilities and realities to exist. We cannot force, we can't, we can't even prompt it because if you prompt it to a narcissist, it is an offense to the very thing that the, they believe they are and the thing that they're going to protect for the rest of their life. Okay. And that is because beyond cognitive empathy with them, there isn't anything in the empathy. Nothing's firing in the brain there. So literally it's their survival. Okay. So if we're projecting, 
our empathy onto them and expecting anything back, it's it's empty, you guys. There's no point. And it isn't mean. It isn't cruel. It isn't unkind to walk away, to become cold, to manipulate back. To And I'm not talking about like making a game out of it. I'm talking about to divert and to slip on the, along the outside. Or if you have to live with one, to learn to say the words that gets the job done. But see, here's the thing. You're going to be living in an empathy-less relationship, okay? So then know that your empathy needs to go elsewhere in life in order for you to be feeling like you're living the life you're meant to live because people with high levels of empathy, we function from it. We can stay safe through setting boundaries and doing all the stuff we teach. But I'm talking about something on a deeper level because when we talk about empathy, you cannot talk about it from the emotions. That's not empathy. Your emotional experience of the feelings that happen, in my opinion, are the second thing that happens after you feel empathy. Empathy happens before the words. Empathy happens before the feelings of how once you've attached to it, identified with it, made it a combination of empathy and sympathy at the same time. It's not a bad thing. I think it's just how it functions. Have this empathic experience of life and not be used and not be hurt at every turn and not be, um, not have it taken as, as a given that it's going to be given to everyone in the world, right? People don't want your empathy. They want your emotional reaction from the empathy. Narcissists do. So here's the thing. If you're feeling bad that you're not, that you're, that you're going no contact, really difficult for you. And you're going no contact and you're like, yeah, I don't want them in my life and I know it. And here's why, but I feel bad. Why do you feel bad? People will say, well, because I have empathy. I know that to them, it looks like I just walked away. I know, I know, not I know, I know. Does that make sense? You feel that? I know that they are hurting because they don't understand what it is they do. Okay. A lot of people feel like it's their, like, because they understand it, it's their responsibility to take care of that other person. It's not. Okay. You can feel and that knowing and just say, yeah, uh huh. And I now need to empathize with myself. Oh, that was a lot of gaslighting. Okay, that was a lot of, and, you, and there's a lot of situ, there's a lot of reasons that if I allow that person to be who they are, which is the most honest and beautiful thing you can do in a relationship, just allow them to be who they are. It doesn't work for my life. Okay, so no contact is for the both of us. It changes things. It can. All right, to to approach it in that way instead of thinking that you need to emotionally act upon, upon the empathy that you're feeling. Does that make sense? 